Hey there, Steve Johnson, Mentor 555, again, coming to you from Medellin, Colombia. On today's show, we've got a powerhouse in the mortgage industry, Melissa Munch. She's been doing this for right at about 30 years, and she still has the fire in her belly. Follow her story. She's recently transitioned over to U.S. Bank. She's excited about the opportunity, but more than that, she really goes deep on how, her, on how powerful her girl tribe, the girl power is for her along with their other referral sources. But dive into this one. I think you're really going to learn a lot. I think you're going to enjoy it. So if you like what you see, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We appreciate you. Melissa Munch, welcome to Mentor 555. Thank you so much, Steve Johnson. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on here. My, my friend, my competitor... Yeah, of many years, you know, I had these I had these great realtors that I would work with through the years, and then they disappear, and I'm like, where did they go? And they're like, oh, they're working with Melissa. Okay, well. <laughs> thirty years uh, in the business, yeah. over thirty years. Thirty years. Does it seem like it? No. Does it seem like you've closed over two billion dollars worth of business? Is that right? Have you really closed that much? Over two billion in my career. It, like once you get to that level and you get to two point one billion, do you like tell people, yeah, I'm at two point one? Like, how does that work when you're? <laughs> no, that's why I say over two billion because it is over two billion. But once I get to three billion, I'll say over yeah, three. You billion. will, you will, you will. Well, yeah. Well, I I know that uh, you'll probably get there. You're probably going to be one of those that you know because you love what you do so much as right. a, as a top mortgage originator and you're so good at it that you're going to be one of those that they're going to be like, yeah, uh, we lost Melissa today. You know, she, <laughs> and we're like, you know, you're going to be like 73, right? Still crushing, crushing out mortgages. Uh, I don't see you stopping God anytime willing. soon. <laughs> God willing. And, and you know, what I love about this amazing industry of ours is just the clients I meet because my passion is really being a super connector. Mm hmm and one plus one equals 11, not 12. <laughs> and just connecting my entrepreneur clients with other entrepreneur clients yeah. that they perhaps can 10X what yeah. they're doing and always staying top of mind. And I have. Yeah. So I've done mortgages for the same client three, four, or five times. And you probably, yeah. you know, you started with them where they were first time home buyer. Yeah. And then they buy their next home, their move up home, and now they're probably in a $2 million house now. And yeah. you've seen them grow financially. You've probably seen their kids grow. You know, the first home, they're, you know, they're, they just got married. Next Absolutely. home, they have a baby. Yeah. And, then, and the next home, like, hey, we want to be in this school district. Yeah, I would imagine there's probably a lot of counseling that goes on in that in that conversation. You too. know, I, I love being a sounding board for my clients. Yeah. And when asked my personal opinion or how can I help them navigate I think that's another intangible that keeps them tied to me. And they know that if I don't know the answer, I'm going to connect them with someone who does mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. them navigate that. Yeah. Well, so. and, and with the thousands of clients that you've worked with over the years, yeah, um, I'm, I probably shouldn't be surprised, but I get, I get the impression that each new client that you get is a new opportunity for a relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And even one of my clients uh, saved my dad's life. Okay. <laughs> uh, president of cardiology at a very big hospital in Austin. And I was able to connect his son to four NFL teams when he wanted it, you know, enter into the draft. Uh -huh. But that's all about your network mm -hmm. and community um, and just how powerful that can be. Yeah. And, um, my philosophy is I go a mile deep and an inch wide. So with my relationships with clients that I really resonate with mm -hmm. and they resonate with me, um, it is an absolute blast and a journey mm -hmm. just to get to know them more. Um, well, and they say that your your network is your what? Net worth. Your net worth. That right. Yeah. And, and it's not just from the financial standpoint, right? It's, it's no. Net, yeah. It has it has more to do with that, and you know you have a lot of exciting things going on. But I don't know if you've ever not had a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah. Right. You've been you've been a powerhouse in our world for ever since I've been. Yeah, I've been doing it since you know ninety four, and you've been in it since ninety two. Ninety two, August of nineteen ninety two. Wow. Okay. What what got you into the industry? You know, I mean, it wasn't interest rates. <laughs> what were no. The eight, nine you know, I, I I I say it this way. Uh, I didn't choose the mortgage business. It chose me. Okay. And I was just 
introduced into this business by someone that I've known for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. And the rest is history, as they say. You, you And you love what you do. I love what I do. Yeah. And the reason I love what I do, I'm good at what I do humbly, yeah. but I love what I do because of the clients that I meet. The relationships. Yes. Yeah. And that's what gives significance yeah. to my life and mm-hmm. doing what I do. Because what we do is not an easy task. It's not an easy no. task. No. And I'm kind of like an HP 12C calculator. I <laughs> think in reverse. Okay. So I always reverse engineer any loan situation. And being able to tell my client and give them that path and that journey where we start with the win, mm-hmm. which is closing, okay. and then reversing that back to, okay, what do we have to do in order to get there? Yeah. And what documentation is required? And my wheelhouse is entrepreneurs, self-employed borrowers. And, you know, I, I work on loans with first-time home buyers all the way up to the multi-multi-million dollar buyers, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs yeah. who have maybe 15 or 17 EINs Oof. on a Schedule E, yeah. mm-hmm. um, doesn't doesn't intimidate me. Yeah. And well, you're a puzzle maker, right? I mean, it, that's what you're doing when you have all those tax returns. You're putting a, a puzzle together. That's right. And 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 you know, helping the first time home buyer can be so satisfying. Yep. And f- finding a solution on someone who has 17 tax returns and a very creative CPA. Yeah. <laughs> as we know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there's so many things I want to talk about today because um, one thing that I have admired uh, about you from afar um, over the years is your ability to to really have resounding, powerful relationships yeah. and have what you call girl power. Girl power. Because you, you have a tribe that you are surrounded by and y'all are interlocked in arms and y'all, yes. are going in, y'all are going into battle together every yeah. day. And those are your realtor friends. Those are your other lender friends. Yes. You know, tell me a little bit about that. How, how important are those relationships to you? So incredibly important. Um, you know, you are the average of the five people you hang around with. And it is being very intentional about those strategic relationships to support each other, to champion each other, uh, to actually give good criticism without being offensive. Mm -hmm. And because we all want each other to be the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it just causes you to rise to higher heights. Mm -hmm. So my insatiable appetite for women as a 51-year-old single mom mm-hmm. of an amazing son, Alex Jordan. Not a bad golfer. Either. Not a bad golfer <laughs> either. Um, is that, you know, we all have a story. And what I've gone through, maybe someone else is going through it. And I'm able to, hey, I've already blazed that trail. Um, so it's it's so powerful to have the woman that I have in my life that with their network and their community, mm-hmm. we're all just one big girl tribe and have the vibe yeah. um, to reach newer heights. Yeah. So it's exciting. We all have each other's backs, you know. And, we do. And you don't see that. And, you know, to that point, and you know this, um, our industry, is, you know, the majority of loan officers are men. Right. I mean, just the, now I'm not now the the women that are really, really good at our craft. Yeah. Are really, really, really good. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that there's there's something to be said about that when you have a woman who is in this world of mortgage lending and uh, operates at a high level the way that you do. And you're a single mom. You have to balance the fact that you've got to be. On point as being mom first. Yes. But working full time. Yes. How do you do that? You know. Where's the secret? My decision is easy when when it comes to that. Alex is my greatest accomplishment. And I've always looked at his precious life as an annuity by investing into that Mm -hmm. so that he can be set for the world Mm -hmm. when he's ready to be out there on his own and Mm -hmm. He's going to be graduating in a couple of months from Westlake Mm -hmm. and going off to college and playing golf Mm -hmm. and majoring in business finance. And, you know, I took him to a real estate summit last weekend (laughs) and he's a huge fan of Grant Cardone's. Um, 
Which, and which that, that their message is pretty powerful. Very powerful. Mm-hmm. And he's so hungry yeah. to learn about multifamily. How do you underwrite it? Mm-hmm. What's the value at this cap rate or that cap rate? And I have to say, you know, Grant asked a question on a clubhouse call. You know, can a single mom raise a son without a man? And, of course, I have a wonderful um, partner in Jim Jordan Mm -hmm. as the father of my son. Mm -hmm. But I believe not just limiting it to to young men, but also young women. Mm -hmm. They need other people in their village Mm -hmm. to help, you know— show them the way. Mm -hmm. And I was so grateful to Grant that he's been that in Alex's life um, as far as watching his YouTubes and um, learning everything that he can, a Mm -hmm. mentor. Mm -hmm. And he's got an incredible golf village, you Mm -hmm. know, John Sosa, who's invested his life into him. Mm -hmm. My brother, who's a minister at Redemption City Church in Round Rock. Mm -hmm. My dad, who is just my rock. Yeah. Um, and I want to touch on that here in a little bit, how important yeah, having that male figure has been for you in your life. Absolutely. You know? And yeah. your dad's like super successful, has an insurance agency, has had it for years. And you weren't born in Austin, but you, you moved to Austin at an early age. You were just a pup, right? I was just a pup. I was five years old. So Okay. Yeah. So so your your relationships here in this town run deep. Very deep. They do. And your family's all still here. Um, my mom and dad, mm-hmm. my brother, my mm-hmm. three nephews are here, and his wife, Debbie, and mm-hmm. then my sister and her husband live in San Antonio. Yeah. Um, we, family's everything yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, yeah, we have each other's back. Well, and speaking of that, and you've told me this, uh, as we as we discussed uh, you know, when we were at dinner last night, your uh, your realtors that you work with are your family. Absolutely. Yeah. Y'all have each other's back. And, and, you know, not everybody has such profound relationships with their realtors the way that you do. Yeah. How do you, how, what did you do in the early, in the early days to create that powerful relationship between you and your referral sources and your dear friends now? You know, I think trust and respect is earned. Mm-hmm. And I think making deposits into their life and bringing value um, masterminding. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's that's really the secret sauce mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. Is actually taking interest mm-hmm. and not being so me focused and be unselfish mm-hmm. and giving to those that man. So many people are starving for significance, mm-hmm. and my intent is to bring significance to someone's life mm-hmm. and have it be symbiotic and synergistic. Mm-hmm. So. When you're in that mode of always giving back to one another and supporting each other, that's what's really fed it. And it's been effortless. Mm -hmm. Yes, it takes effort. Mm -hmm. But I love loving on my clients and my agents. Um, And You do a really good job of that. Just being authentic. Yeah, just hearing you on your calls when I've been around you and just the the depth of that relationship that y'all have. Yeah. Yeah. it's it's pretty clear that it's going to be very difficult for someone to penetrate that relationship between you it's and It's mine her. to lose. Yeah. It's my relationship to lose. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of my best friends was my competitor in the lending business, and that's how we met. <laughs> and she's pretty, she's very powerful. She's a major influencer, and she's an icon agent with EXP. And um, well, who is it? Tell me. Who is Lisa it? Lisa Copeland. Well, Lisa Copeland. She's she's amazing. She's a powerhouse. She's a powerhouse. Mm-hmm. And actually, I learned about, you know, Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone through Lisa and then sharing that with my son, Alex. I mean, it's just gone to a whole new 10x level. Mm -hmm. Um, But she's amazing. Sharon Lecter uh, that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Mm -hmm. a co-author of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's written 15 best-selling New York Times books. Yeah. And I've had the absolute pleasure of having Sharon Lecter personally in my home celebrating her birthday. Yeah. Alex loves her. She loves Alex. And she's just an amazing, amazing, amazing human being. Yeah. And I have Lisa Copeland, I think, for that. Yeah. Um, so there's just amazing energy and synergy. And we just have the heart mm-hmm. to educate women on financial literacy mm-hmm. and wanting 
Being um, empowered, basically helping to be empower empowered. these other women. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And give back. Because you've had that you've had that opportunity throughout your career. I think that we would both agree that there have been blessings that have been uh that both of us have probably many more blessings than what we deserve, right? Absolutely. Just, God's been so good and mm-hmm, so faithful. Mm-hmm. And you know, life isn't easy. Yeah. But he never promised us easy. No. But I tell you what. Who wants easy? That's boring. <laughs> he he's my rock uh-huh. mm-hmm. and my place of peace and where you go to where you're anxious, you're unsure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have some big news coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Some um, exciting news. And I'm ready to, to get to another level. Mm-hmm. And uh, the path has been made. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to share it with everyone yeah. as to what that is. Yeah. Because it's going to be off the hook. It's, it's going to be like a drop of mi- drop the mic type situation it is for drop you. Drop the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that you you've, you've shared that with me with what that's going to be, and I actually uh, am like beyond excited yeah. about what those opportunities are going to bring you. And you know, I, th- I think from from the standpoint of being someone who has been in this industry for as long as you have and has seen all the ups and all the downs right now we're in a we're in a really weird time it's uncertain times for a lot of people yeah you know and and how are you how are you handling that in conversations with your clients yeah. along with your referral sources your your partners your referral par- partners like cuz i know that if they're coming to me asking me hey what do you, what do you think is going to happen yeah what are your thoughts what do you, what do you foresee you know when this happened where interest rates started spiking up at a rapid pace mm-hmm. i remember that childhood book who moved my cheese <laughs> Okay, yeah. And, you know, we can't wait for things to happen to us. We need to happen to it. Mm -hmm. Either change is going to happen to you or you're going to happen to it. Mm -hmm. I prefer to be the one to happen to it. So what did I do? I got licensed in Florida, Colorado, Tennessee, Oklahoma, because that's where my son's going to be attending college, Mm -hmm. California. Uh, Okay, somebody moved my cheese. I'm going to go find new cheese. Okay. And uh, so that's my philosophy. Yeah. So don't stay where you are mm-hmm. because when you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I choose to not let this uncertain time affect my ability to go out there and still put up the big numbers that I'm used to putting up. Mm-hmm. And it's not about the numbers. Right. Um, money doesn't motivate me. Right. Um, it's just, man... You know, did I live today, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did I do what I needed to do to move my life forward mm-hmm. to my ultimate goal? And you're constantly doing that. I'm right? constantly yeah. doing that. And and with what we do, it's it, it, the mortgage industry is such a unique industry in yeah. that it, it's intertwined with our personal life and our business life, right? You don't check in at eight and check out at five. I mean, you're no. on, you're on. At all times, weekends. You're a weekend warrior. I mean, you and I were talking about it earlier, and you, you you asked me, Steve, do you have any of your realtors that can hold an open house for for one of my homes? Yeah. I mean, you're always thinking about the inclusion of your realtors and your friends. Right. Um, the the fact that this industry gives us that opportunity uh, is is obviously you know it can be a, a financial financial reward, but also we don't have the downtime. How do you balance that, right? Because you're always on. Yeah, I am always on. But like I said, you know, I've got amazing women that support Mm me. mm -hmm. Uh, And I want to talk about your team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Amazing, amazing team that supports me and um, where I am able to take that time with Alex to go away for the weekend. We're headed to the Masters next weekend for his birthday. He's going to be 18. It's so awesome. Um, That's like a once in a lifetime opportunity there. It is. Yeah. And you know, Alex and I took him to Alton John front row seats in Houston. I mean, that's what really matters to me. And this yeah. business has allowed me to financially be able to invest in him mm-hmm. um, to do the things that are one of a kind, right? Yeah. Um, so it's really, it's, this business has been such a gift. Well, and you've, you've done well financially throughout the, you know, throughout the years, of course. And for yeah. you, uh, I know that the financial literacy yes. for other women right. in, in, not just in the mortgage industry, but just women that are coming up through the ranks, especially single moms. How important is that to you? So important. 
you know, my heart is with single women that have children and they may have a great um, partner who, you know, uh, the father of their children Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those relationships may be good or not good. Mm -hmm. And I really want to be a beacon of light and hope for those single moms that are trying to figure it out and how to stay connected with your kids Mm -hmm. through life and not let them fall through the traps of what this world does to our children today via TikTok, via social media, via outside influences. Mm -hmm. Um, I really have a heart to share with them Mm -hmm. the how-to, how I did it, and it's how you not, continue to do it, and how yep. I continue mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it was so touching when when Alex and I were at the real estate summit, and I was able to share a little bit of my story about Alex and how he is the greatest achievement mm-hmm. I have in my life. Yeah, and I had a couple of single dads that came up to me that said, "Wow, I." I would love to have that kind of relationship with my teenager. Mm -hmm. They just don't talk to me. And you know, Steve, you know, my secret way back when is as soon as Alex could start talking to me, we had what we called heart checks. And I was given this idea by the amazing author, Andy Andrews. And what a heart check is, is right before you sing songs, say your prayers, um, I would always ask Alex, Alex, who did you love today? Did someone hurt you today? Or just let it rip. Mm -hmm. So 10 minutes of no condemnation. And, you know, the conversations got a lot more different from three to four to five (laughs) to six. But a cool story out of all of that is Alex was playing tackle football and he was very good. And during one of our heart checks, he said, Mommy? because he called me mommy at four and five. Mm -hmm. He said, my coaches are mad at me. And I said, well, how can they be mad at you? You're such a great player. He goes, I can't remember my plays. And I said, well, Alex, no, I I take that back. He was in first grade, I believe. So that would have been six. Uh, I said, well, hey, listen, why don't I call your coach? I'll have him send me all your plays. We'll treat it like homework. He goes, you would do that? I said, yeah. So I met his coach the next day. He told me to show up at the football field 30 minutes before practice. Those football, you know, plays are like hieroglyphics. So I have him explain (laughs) it to me. Once I learned all of his plays, I looked at the coach. I'm like, is this it? He goes, yeah, that's it. I said, I think I got this. So I went to Dick's, got the little miniature cones, set it up like the line of scrimmage. And I called out the plays to Alex. And you know what I learned? He didn't know his line of scrimmage. And it was as simple as that. Yeah. So how I taught Alex the line of scrimmage in football is I said, dude, you got the quarterback in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got the Republicans on the right hand side. Okay. Those are all your even numbers. Okay. So right side Republicans, left side Democrats. Because you know Republicans and Democrats are right and left wing. Okay. Okay. That's how I taught him the line of scrimmage. And the rest is history. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Because Alex has loved politics since, you know, Uh I don't know, since four or five years old. And he Uh reads, you know, books on Martin Luther King and he loves JFK. And uh, anyway, so that's kind of a cool story. And I, I told Alex, I said, listen, you know. I want you to say that story at my eulogy, like years and years and years from now, but that will forever be one of my greatest stories. And I think that's the beauty of letting your children decompress without condemnation, Mm -hmm. what's in their head, what's on their mind. Now, obviously, Alex is 17, so our conversations, you know, are more mature now Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. what he's facing and the pressures and what he's really strived to stay away from. Mm -hmm. And it's the coolest thing ever. Well, you're clearly, you're a proud parent. You know, you and Jim have done a fantastic job with Alex. And uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. And I think really how that, how that is incorporated in, in our conversation today is that you recognize that he has a a desire and an appetite to learn about uh, 
our industry basically. Absolutely. You know, and 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 for you, that's just that that's real easy. You know, one plus one equals what eleven. Eleven, <laughs> because that's when you're masterminding. Yeah. yeah. One plus one does not equal two, yeah. and he does know the power of association. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he sees that with you firsthand. Like when you you've recently been going to the the masterminds and the summits. Was the most recent one in Miami that you just got? The most back recent from? one was in Miami, yeah. and. Honey, How it was powerful like was that? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like <sighs> eight hours a day. And he it went was, with you, right? It, he went with me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I would be talking to someone at one side of the room. He would text me and say, Mom, I just you know, met this person. I really think you guys could work well together. So come over here when you're done. And it was like that the whole weekend. And then when Grant said, hey, I'm going to underwrite a deal tomorrow, bring me a deal tomorrow. So what did Alex do? We got back to the hotel room. He got on his laptop. He found a deal for Grant. Grant didn't do the deal. But just the fact that on his own, Mm -hmm. um, he says, come on, mom, let's work the numbers on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we buy it at this cap rate, this is the value I put it at. What do you come up with? Mm -hmm. I mean, Unbelievable. Who does that? Who does uh, who that? Does that at 17? 17. Um, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Well, and so that that speaks volumes for what he's been exposed to. Yes. You know, and he's seen you, and his dad's a fantastic uh, mortgage job. And Absolutely. Jim's brilliant as well. So I think you are doing fantastic with him. Yeah. But thank I, you, you know, I, I think that you know that it resonates that your home life was really important for you. And I know that your yeah. dad. Was a was a key figure. Obviously, your mom as well. Yeah, both but, of them. But having that that role model in the house for yeah. you was critically important. And it's clearly the same for you. Yes. In in your home. Yes. What do you think that uh, a, a single mother, whether she's in our industry or a different one, how important is it for them to either be or have had that role model experience like what you had? You know, I know not everyone has the family that I have, and I'm so blessed that I do have them. Mm -hmm. But if they haven't had that, seek other people out that, you know, you can learn from and gain that knowledge from, or someone that is going to, you know, help you increase the value of your stock, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's going to make you stronger. You know, I think reading great books um, I think surrounding yourself with the right people mm-hmm. that support you, that can pour into you, mm-hmm. um, it's critically important. But, you know, I just know I've been blessed with an amazing family and there's mm-hmm. those that haven't been. So I would say, gosh, if you didn't have it growing up, you know, look for those that you can learn from. Mm-hmm. Um, Audible books is just amazing for me. I mean, that's Honestly, um, that's how I do it myself. Now. Yeah, you can rock out a great book. You know, you put it on two x speed or two and a half speed, which is yeah, you know, and then you can knock out a great book on a flight, or you probably do it as you're traveling to and from your summits now. I would yeah, imagine, or in the car. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what women in in your group in your power group? What is it? What skill set is it? What 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 talent is it that you see that they possess? that makes them different, that makes them stand out, that you admire and that you even incorporate in your own life? They don't gossip. Okay. They're reading the good books. Mm -hmm. They're going to the summits. They're trying to enlarge their territory, Mm -hmm. not only from a professional standpoint, but an emotional standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, Danelle Degato, she's another one. She's an amazing woman that was a single mom. Mm -hmm. Um. She's got an incredible story. Um, she's got something on Facebook, you know, every Friday night. And I love to listen to her because she always brings a topic to the table and then goes really deep with that one topic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it resonates with me. Mm-hmm. So, in, in the social media posts, are, are you are you involved? Like, are you sending messages on social media? It, you know, like a lot of people, you know, that, that's part of their platform now, right? Yeah. Whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn, how right. tied in are you on that? And if you are, or those that you follow, are there messages? Are they are they resonating for you? 
No, absolutely. I follow Sharon Lecter. I follow Lisa Copeland. I follow Elena yeah. Cardone. I follow Danelle Delgado and some other powerful women, Rebecca Contreras, mm-hmm. uh, Sylvia Acevedo, who I had the great pleasure of doing a personal loan for her when she lived in Austin and okay. worked for Dell. Okay. Um, she's an incredible lady. She was the former president of the Girl Scouts of America. She's going to be given a keynote in Austin. And we worked together 20 years ago. Wow. I think she lives in Santa Barbara now. Um, it is so cool to have these powerful women, you know, for us to synergize and still say, Hey, I'm back in town, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so you still, you still stay closely in contact with your crew. I do. Yeah, I do. And it's, it, maybe it's not every day. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's what good gal pals do they know life is busy Mm -hmm. so it's picking up where you left off Mm -hmm. and some you know maybe the duration of time is longer than others Mm -hmm. but i i know i know who i've got Mm -hmm. um and who i respect and who i will continue um to forge a deeper relationship with question for you knowing all that and that these women are such an important part of your life they're the other <clears throat> the other women loan officers in our industry, mm-hmm. and again, some are fantastic, but very few close the volume that you do. What do you think that it is that separates you from these other loan officers? You know, I think everyone's different. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe their goal is not to bust it out with massive amounts of volume. Fair enough. So I think I think really it's an individual decision um, for those that are striving to try to bust out and, and break that ceiling for themselves. My encouragement would be, you know, um, feed yourself the good books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, increase your worth. What about your competitive nature? You know, my competition is myself. Okay. Yeah. I really don't see anyone else. In the, I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because my my clients and my database is mine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you own that. Yeah. I mean, I and do. You, you take I've ownership of those relationships, yeah. right? Okay. Right. Okay. So I don't see others as competition. It's mm-hmm. it, I don't see them that way. I believe the power of collaboration, mm-hmm. even it, if it's with my competitor, I think collaboration is also a new currency Mm -hmm. in this business. And I think if people would view collaboration as currency and not you're my competition and I just want to squash you. Yeah. um, And yes, I am fiercely competitive. Don't get me wrong. Um, But that's just my, that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, to be honest. And, 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 you know, I think that the fact is, and I, I know I keep going back to this, Melissa, but I, I have so much admiration for women, which includes you, that are in our industry because it's a grind, uh-huh. you know, and it's not just the originators, it's our team, right? you know, our processors and our underwriters, which those tend to be mostly female. You know, you, if you have a, if you have a male processor, uh, usually they're going to be pretty darn good because they'll get gobbled up and spit out, yeah. you know, by the, by the great processors yeah. that we've worked with through the years. Right. Um, wh- how important is that for you? And I know, I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. How important is that, is that camaraderie with your team, with your back end engine that your clients don't get a chance to see? It's everything. Yeah. Because I'm only as good as my team. Yeah. 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 And they have, does your team, uh, when you get a loan, walk me through what happens. You get a call from a client, they're under con, you get, you, you get a call from one of your girl, you know, girl power. Hey, Melissa, got a contract, going right. to introduce you to so-and-so family, we're rock and roll, we're under contract. Right. You get it. You have that first initial phone call. How involved are you at the beginning, middle and end of the loan? What you, what, what, how, how often are you touching that process? I'm dripping on them okay. throughout. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I just set the table of expectation for my client. Yeah. And Lisa Bermudez is amazing. She's my loan partner. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it would go to Tina. Tina's amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing mom. Yep. You know, loves her husband, loves her kids. Um, and she would go after the supporting documentation. She was so incredibly diligent. And um, 
just put together a beautiful file. And then my processor, Robin, mm -hmm. who's amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, if Tina handed off a file to Robin, Robin submitted it to underwriting that day. Yeah. So, you know, you remember when the market where there were 30 and 40 contracts for one house, yep. it was mm -hmm. highly competitive. Yep. But how I earned the respect and actually gained some really great new agents is our record was closing alone from hello to here's your keys in 10 calendar days. 10 calendar days, which includes Ten, a weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to have that kind of speed and that synchronization, mm -hmm. synchronization, um, you got to have a solid team. Right. right. And again, it was my girl tribe. Would you, what about your relationship with underwriting? What's that, what's that like from, from a, a, you know, from a woman's perspective? Because I can only see it from a man's perspective, yeah. right? And when we have a loan that we're trying to massage for what, you know, whatever that massaging is. Yeah. And we're trying to be, we're, we're trying to have a human element. Yes. Yeah. When you have a, <clears throat> let's just say that you have a tough loan and uh, you're trying to, uh, you know, share, convey that with your underwriter and let's say it's a single mom that maybe has a couple of, you know, slow payments on the credit report. Mm -hmm. Are you humanizing that with an underwriter? Like, do you feel like that you can you can connect with uh, with the underwriter when you're able to share that story with them? Yeah, I've had to negotiate with my underwriter. Mm -hmm. um, I love I loved my underwriter. I had an assigned conforming underwriter and also a jumbo underwriter. Mm -hmm. Both women love them. Send them Christmas cards every year. Yeah. Uh, and they know that if I reach out to them, it's not crying wolf. Yeah. Like I really do. You have your stripes on the wall with them. I do. You have a built-in you yeah. relationship that you've great built with relationship them and trust. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you, you know, as as you as you start to look towards the new chapter of mm -hmm. Melissa Munch's career. Melissa 5.0. <laughs> Is it Melissa 5.0, 10X 5.0? 10X 5.0, here we go. Oh Let's go. God. You're going to be on fire. Let's go. Yeah. I feel like I'm aging backwards, to be honest with you, yep. um, because of so many great things that uh, I have going on right now. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Well, and I can tell that there's a there's a, there's a fire in your belly. There is. You know, and I can tell yes. just being around you and just the energy and, you know, just just how how you're communicating and um you're going to be able to have uh products not to give not to give it away, but you're going to be able to have products that you didn't have before. How excited are you to be able to have some niche products that you, because ultimately you've been able to get, you know, you you're competing against others by having a similar type product, right? Right. Yeah, with, with our, our friendly competitors. Now yeah. you're going to have some niche products that are going to separate you from the rest of the herd. How it's powerful is that? It's going to take me that? to a whole new level. Yeah. Like, I think I gave you this analogy yesterday, and I mean no, just I, I, not to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll use straight jacket. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> I feel like being in a straight jacket and wanting to run the Boston Marathon, impossible. Uh-huh, yeah. So this fire that you see inside of me, this new light mm -hmm. that you see inside of me, and I've always been very motivated, mm -hmm. but this is going to be off the hook. Mm -hmm. um, not right. only am I going to run that Boston Marathon, I'm going to win that Boston Marathon. That's how I feel right now. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, full throttle. It's like like a junkyard dog off the chain, right? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and these new relationships that, and they're not new, but some of the newer relationships that you have these these uh, you know call it power gals, right? Yeah. That that you are that you know, you're you're forging these relationships in other markets. Yes. You know, and now that you're going to be able to serve other markets. Yes. And and you know some luxury customers that you may not have been able to provide financing for prior. Because right. as we talked about it, uh, the pricing can be quite different, you know, when you're with uh, a particular partner versus another partner, and now your rates are going to be like super competitive. Yeah. And you're going to be able to offer products that you couldn't before. And so are you going through, <clears throat> like, is there a, <clears throat> is there a, a target audience that you feel like that you'll be able to serve now that maybe you weren't able to serve before? Let me just put it to you this way. I know the rooms I'm going to go into now. And these are rooms I already know, mm. but I had nothing to offer. Yeah. 
Yeah, professionally. Professionally, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do I still have the friendships there? Absolutely. But now I've got something to come with mm -hmm. that now they're going to keep Melissa Munch top of mind. Yeah. And they'll be able to, you'll be able to refer business back and forth. And you're really good at that, from what I can tell, of <clears throat> paying it forward. Yes. Right. And because yes. it's about your relationship first. And then as you build it with your realtor, you know, with your friends that are fantastic realtors, how is it that, um, you know, it's it's not an easy task, <clears throat> pardon me, to hold on to a realtor relationship for years and years and years and for that to be impenet impenetrable right. by other loan officers. How do you do that? Intention mm. and, and bringing value and making deposits mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with money. What are some of those deposits? Give me some examples. You know, I've got some really close realtor relationships that they come to me about personal matters, yeah. personal relationships, or helping them figure out, hey, I've got this client, but this is a situation and no one can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I said, bring it. Um, I, I had a builder connect me with one of his clients and he's an amazing human being, mm -hmm. but... He said, well, this is my last shot. If you can't do it, I'm just going to give up. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I figured out a way. <laughs> I figured out a way. Yeah. I will go to the wall for any of my relationships. Yeah. And I will absolutely go to the ends of the earth to protect it. And, you know, getting back to going into those high-powered rooms again mm -hmm. with confidence now yeah. of – Okay, keep me top of mind because I want you to legitimately think of me. now. Legitimately, yeah. mm -hmm. like you're on my Christmas card yeah. list. You know I love you. I know your kids, um, but now I have something that I know that I'll mm -hmm. I won't get beat on. Yeah. Um, and going back to that, it's it's what an amazing feeling, yeah. and being able to also bring my agents along with me yes. to tap them into my sphere yes. of that whole next level type of mortgage <laughs> client, if you mm -hmm, will, mm -hmm. referral. But, you know, these people that I'm talking about, I mean, no matter which room I go into, yeah. right, yeah. people know my character and they know my competence. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy to, you know. Well, you've got those stripes on the wall. I do, yeah. What is it? And humbly, I mean, I say that, and I'm yeah. so fortunate. Yeah. Um, well, you've put it. You've 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 put in. You've put the hours in. You know, those stripes are on the wall. You've ran the laps, right? You've right. done the exercise, um, and they know that about you. What are some things? Give me a couple of things. Give me some juice. It puts some juice in the blender here. What are some things about Melissa Munch that somebody wouldn't know about you? Mm. Give me some secret sauce. Wow. I'm yeah. trying to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, people that shoot. people that are profoundly in your sphere that, that they would learn if they watch this, when they watch this podcast, they're going to say, I didn't know that about Melissa. Holy cow. What adversities have you gone through that maybe you haven't shared with some of the people that are close in your sphere? Um, that have been challenges. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I think going through a divorce was um, very difficult, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, How many years ago was that? 2007. Okay. So, 15, God. 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah so, Alex. I right. haven't, okay, this is something they don't know. Because I don't really, I haven't dated in five years. Okay. Um, and it, it's not to be a martyr, but I just wanted my focus to be on my son and no distractions in my business. Mm -hmm. um, so when Alex goes off to college, you know, we had a sit Look down. <laughs> we, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. We had a sit down dinner and he goes, mom, I want you to tell me what are your, what are your hobbies going to be? Um, are you going to start dating again? And it was so cool that he wants to make sure, man, my mom is okay. Mm -hmm. And I know he knows I'm okay. Yeah. But I don't think many of my clients know that I that I haven't 
dated in five years. So that would be something. So that's something. So um, so everyone out there, we need to make sure that y'all know that Miss Melissa is, once Alex goes to college, let's start, you know, you're having the phone blow up, right? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm and, sure and that's do happening. it by referral, you know. Yeah. Um, so what I haven't shared a lot of is, is I do want that life partner I can run with mm-hmm. and to be an addition to, not a subtraction from and vice versa. Yeah. And um, to be God fearing and successful in their own right, yeah. and uh, just have a lot of fun exploring the world and building an empire together. Yeah. Well, and I, you, you, you said something interesting yeah, that that I think resonates. <clears throat> Anybody who who is going to be on that ship with you, they're going to have to run. They're not going to be able to walk because you're a runner. You're not a walker. I am, but yeah. you know what, Steve? Sometimes it's good to just sit in the corner and have someone sit with you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yes, I will always be very motivated as to how do we continue to grow and not mm-hmm. only, you know, make those big audacious goals mm-hmm. and move towards those goals, mm-hmm. but having someone that sees that vision too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and wants that for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of that, you know, when you have someone <clears throat> right now, it's, you know, you're fending for yourself and for Alex, right? Yes. And, and you know that you have to, you know, from a financial standpoint, you know what, what it is that you have to do to hit your mark. Right. What, 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 where are you investing? I know that you invest in real estate. Yes. Right. And that's been good to you over the years. Yes. Right. And what other, what other advice? Cause I know that that's something that we talked about the financial literacy of other women, of yes. other single moms, what type of investment streams would you recommend for them? I would recommend a multifamily yeah. and getting a part of um, those types of stable projects. Real estate, yeah. Mm-hmm. Real, real estate property. that's going to be held long term, that's mm-hmm. going to give you cash flow, that you're going to be able to take depreciation to limit your exposure to the IRS on your earned income. And um, it's just taking that earned income and living off 20 or 30 percent of it and investing the rest. And I think real estate is still an incredible, probably the best investment ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, Multifamily, especially. Well, yeah. And they're not there's no there's no shortage of it, of the new construction. I was coming back from the coast on Sunday. Right. And you coming through San Marcos and we know how this market has grown. It continues to grow. Right. right? We just we're, we're blessed to be in what could be considered the best market in the country year right. over year, right? Right. Uh, and, and, and unless you're living it and breathing it, you may not, you know, people from the outside may not understand it, but it's real. And all the, you know, to that point, all the multifamily housing that's already on the ground, but that's going vertical. Yeah. That's a great platform to be on. It's I a great you, platform. Mm-hmm. And I'd love, I would invite anyone to reach out to me at melissamunch at gmail.com mm-hmm. and say, hey, how can I learn more? Mm-hmm. Because it's not just investing in the real estate, but it's finding the right real estate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is going to be um, the best location. Location's the most critical thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's a long term. It's a long term investment that is actually going to drip. Are you and, able to have these conversations with uh, with the women in your in your circle, like with the realtors that you work with? You know, absolutely. Investment strategies. Do y'all yes. do y'all have power meetings when it comes to that? You know, I actually now that you've said that, I have not had that. Okay. Um, Think about the how how empowering that can be. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But to my personal girl tribe mm-hmm. sphere, mm-hmm. Uh, that is a very good and um, welcome conversation that we have. Well, and, and you know, to that point, <clears throat> you know, the realtors that you work with or your referral sources or women yeah. that you admire, that's something that you now are, you have, you know, power is knowledge. <clears throat> and, you, and you have this knowledge now in the multifamily space and yeah. you continue to educate yourself. And I know that you're, it's a deep dive for you. Like it you're, is, but you're I not love turning it. Back. You love it. I love it. And it's, it's yeah. something that you, I can see that you're becoming more and more passionate about just as you are in mortgage. Yeah. But you see how juicy that can be where um, the women in your circle that you're working with, you're like, hey, I can, now this is an opportunity for me to give back and for you to recognize you, know, that you just I, gave me a great idea, and I'm sure I would have come around to it, but 
now it's top of mind and just being intentional and putting that together. Yes, from our real estate partners as well. Well, and that's where in in you know, you know we've had the opportunity over the last year, you know, 2020 2021, you were like me. We couldn't even breathe. You know, it was so crazy right. in our industry yeah. and all the refinances and, you know, all the purchases. And, you know, the, the business has slowed down. If you're like me, I'm clipping, you know, 50% of what I was before. Sure. But that's given right me. With you. You're, yeah, okay. And But you're not 50% of who you were before. No. It's just that I look at that as now I have more opportunities to find uh, uh, you know, other referral partners right. or to be able to, what can I do to give back to my referral partners, right. you know? Right. And so we're, it's, it's an opportunity for us to be creative. Yes. What creative ways have you, uh, cause I want you to give some secret sauce to the other young female loan officers that maybe are struggling right now mm-hmm. because there are a lot that are right. right. What guidance and advice would you give them? Give them your top three, secret sauce moments? Like what can they do to drive in business? I think what they should think about is this, and this is how I think about my business, is sorting and qualifying your database. Okay. So I have my first class passengers. I have people in coach. I have people at the back of the bus and people that need to exit the bus, right? Or the flight. And if you think about it, if I was, okay, let's just say, because I am single, if I were to get married tomorrow, And if someone who hasn't had a structured database, if they were getting tomorrow, who would come to their wedding? Mm -hmm. And anyone can easily come up with 200 names. From those 200 names, sort and qualify it. A plus A, B, C, and D is like delete, right? Yeah. Um, Your first class passengers, that's who you go the deepest with. That's who you schedule more frequent lunch appointments with that's you know you know their kids you know their story uh a class passengers um you know those are people that refer you every once in a while but those are someone in your purview that you want to get to know better you you only have so much time to invest and that's mm-hmm. why i say sort it that way there's only so a much pluses, space in first those class. are your first class mm-hmm. passengers mm-hmm. the a's you have a relationship but you don't have a real deep relationship mm-hmm. B's, you know, that's someone that could possibly elevate to an A or an A plus, but you need to show them how to refer you. And then C is just you go to the hairdresser, you meet someone, you know, everyone you meet goes into the C category. Mm -hmm. And then it's constantly looking at that database and trading up and trading out Mm -hmm. from a business perspective. Um, My business exploded when I did this for the first time in 2000. Uh. I, I did this in 2000 and in 2023, I personally closed 125 million that year. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the advice I'd give to them Okay, is really take a, into account their database mm-hmm. and do an inventory, basically taking inventory. Mm-hmm. Where are you getting your business? Mm-hmm. 25% of my clientele were repeat clients, mm-hmm. right? Either they referred me or I did another loan for them. Mm-hmm. They made up 25% of my volume. Do you use a CRM? I do. Yeah? Okay. I do. Yeah. And is that, you know, and I'm assuming like you're able to, in that CRM, when you have your database, you have them labeled? Do you have them labeled as, as first class? And a, I do. B and C? Okay. I do. Yeah. Absolutely. And once you started doing that, that's when you saw your business explode. You know why? Because my vision was clear in that I did everything with intention. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just a a database to say, I've got a database, right? Mm -hmm. Because some people need to be taken from that database Mm -hmm. that you can't remember who they are. Mm -hmm. Those are your C type Mm -hmm. additions. If you can't remember their name, they're not going to remember yours. And really sorting and qualifying Mm -hmm. and calling that database, but on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. So, and it also just keeps top of mind the clients that, ah, gosh, we had such a great time together when we were working together on their loan. And she referred me this person or that person. I need to reach out to her. Mm-hmm. You know, send birthday cards, mm-hmm. handwritten birthday Make cards. Make a phone call. Make mm-hmm. a phone call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You so do just, handwritten cards? I do. Oh, it's so powerful. I do. Yeah. Even my Christmas cards, I self-address. Is that right? So. Yeah. Only my A pluses get my personal Christmas cards. Okay. That I hand address and 
Do you let them know? You say, hey, you're A plus and I'm counting on you? Um, no. <laughs> it just it's automatically going to With happen. me, I, yeah, that would be too contrived. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just in my own way, being in my own authentic way. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the bad thing to do. Right. Um, but I'm not like in your face. You're my, you know what I'm saying? You're just letting I, the authenticity. I do authenticity. tell them, yeah, mm-hmm. just very authentic and mm-hmm. reminding them how important they are to me. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever have, did you have times where you tried something uh, like a creative marketing uh, idea that you're like, oh my God, how did I not think about that before? Like, does anything jump off? Like I used to. I can give you an example. Perfect. So I think it was in 2012. Um, and I think during that year, it's being in the business as long as we've been in it, Right. My prayer that year, it was at Christmas time. I said, God, just renew my strength for this business, right? Because it can be a grind. Mm -hmm. Remind me of why I'm in this. And that's why I'm saying it's the relationships with my clients. So that's the year that I started sending out my personal Brenda Ladd, who's an amazing photographer. She's photographed me and Alex uh, for 17 years, 18 years, whatever it's been. For like your Christmas cards and stuff? So I thought, you know what? This year, I'm going to send my personal Christmas card to my A-plus clients. Mm -hmm. As I was handwriting out their names, it gave me an idea. Wow. This person needs to meet that person. That person needs to meet this person. And I'm such a fan of Andy Andrews, who wrote The Butterfly Effect. Mm Mm-hmm. And Sam Corson, who's a past client, he was a former CIO of Freescale, and You know, we would have coffee because I said, Sam, can you mentor me? And he goes, oh, my gosh, absolutely. So at one of our breakfasts, I said, hey, this is my idea. I want to put on a private event for my best clients, and I want to limit it to 40. So I had to choose 40 people, which is really hard Mm -hmm. out of my 150 of eight pluses. I said, but this person needs to meet that person. We're talking about CEOs, CIOs of publicly traded companies, entrepreneurs, um, a future NFL player was in that mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, the man that saved my dad's life was mm-hmm. in that mix. Um, and so I labeled the event living a life of significance, mm-hmm. AKA my Lalo script. Okay. And Sam said, Oh my gosh, Melissa, that's a great idea. So what I did is I contacted my clients. I said, I want your assistant's name and email And I said, I want you to save the date. I treated it just like a wedding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said, it's three months out. I want your assistant to put this on her calendar and I want you to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. So how powerful was it? It was so powerful. And what I did is, is I reached out to them. I said, I want your color photo, your headshot, and I want your bio. Mm -hmm. And with the help of Brenda Ladd, we put together my living a life of significance book and I wrote the forward to the book. Okay. And um, I called Andy Andrews' office and I said, hey, I'm ripping off the cover of The Butterfly Effect, but I'm not selling these, I promise you. And they gave me the permission (laughs) to rip off the cover of Butterfly Effect. And so that night as they walked into that room and I had Brenda Ladd, amazing photographer again, I said, Brenda, I want to take a group shot. And I had these silver and gray frames living a life of significance. I said, by the time they leave this event tonight, I want that picture in the frame and their swag bag. Holy cow. So not only did they have that, they had a autographed copy of the Butterfly Effect book by Andy Andrews. Mm -hmm. I bought them a Kindle. This is when Kindles were just now getting really big, Mm -hmm. and a lot of them traveled. So instead of lugging around these heavy books, I bought them each a Kindle and um, a gift certificate to Brenda Ladd for an updated headshot. Yeah. So the cool thing was when I started that evening, I introduced them. They didn't introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. I told my story of my relationship with them, Mm -hmm. and that was it. I wanted, and I told them, I said, you know, at the end of your life, someone's going to sum your life up in one sentence. What is your sentence going to be? And I let them know how intentional and selective I was. I said, maybe someday, one day you would have met 
so and so and so and so. I said, tonight, I'm making it intentional. Yeah. And in this book, you know, I had their name badges engraved. So they had this really beautiful name badge that they could reuse. And um, each one got a book and a pen. And as they met each other, they were making notes. So I made sure that the picture and the bio was on the right side reading pane. Okay. And then they could take notes on the left-hand uh, side so of the page. left side was blank for notes? Yeah. Okay. And it was so powerful. It was supposed to be from 6.30 to 8.30. Their wives were invited. So the women connected. Mm -hmm. The men connected. And the next morning, the president of cardiology sent an email out to everyone that was there that night because I released. They didn't even know who was coming. They just yeah. came because I said, please this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And I just need your commitment that you're going to be there. Right. I invited 40, 39 came. It was immense successful. Yeah. And um, so he sent out an email and he said, I'm going to give a free um, heart scan to everyone. I want to make sure everyone's healthy. No expense to you. Huh. That's how significant, meaningful, and powerful that night was. Yeah. And... The reason why I had that picture in their frame when they left is so they could take it from the bag and onto their desk or on the shelf at their home. Yeah. And it's so cool because when I walk into those clients' offices, I, I, and they're clients and friends. Right, yeah. I consider them friends. The book is so beautiful. It's a table piece. Yeah. A conversation piece. Yeah. And then to have that frame still in their office. Yeah. Um. Is powerful because it was such a powerful night. That's that is a that's that's a wow to yeah. me. That blows me away. That it really was does. Amazing. And how? And I'm glad you shared that story because that took a lot of effort. It did. You know, it was like a wedding. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. Um, but now they all like. There's that. What was it called? Lelos. Is that the acronym for it? It's what I. Yes, okay. I gave it that acronym. Yeah, I love Living it. a life of significance. Uh -huh. Because I think really, truly, at the end of the day, we all want significance. Mm -hmm. We all want to matter. We mm -hmm. all want to love. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, uh, Brendan Richard, you know, did you matter today? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. love today? Mm -hmm. um, and really, I think, all human beings, it boils down to this, those simple things. Yeah. And I think sometimes life gets so busy that we forget to take a breath and say, man, did I live today? Mm -hmm. Can I sign my name to today? Mm -hmm. Did I matter today? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Did I make a difference today? Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes those days get away from you, but I think it's pretty cool. I think at the end of the day, everyone wants significance. If someone were to take that idea and run with it, you know, who someone who watches this uh, this podcast yeah. or listens to it, uh, would you be okay with that, honey? I would be okay with anyone wanting to do that. That's so powerful because, because anyone, I tell you what, you do that and putting that kind of intention behind it, where you, it's not for you, it's for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And I told them, you know what? Let me be the first stone to cast in the pond. Mm -hmm. I said, the ripple effect tonight, I'm excited and I still get chills, right? Mm -hmm. When I talk about this, because I'm like, how many jobs are going to be created tonight? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many ceilings are going to be, gonna be mm -hmm. raised tonight? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's powerful. Mm -hmm. When you went around the room and, and you asked for them to say, you know, what that one sentence would be, yeah. you know, uh, what would that one sentence be if someone were saying that about you? That I tried mm -hmm. and that I loved mm -hmm. and I loved so hard because yeah. I do. I love so hard. Um, now our greatest strength is our greatest weakness, but you know what? I think vulnerability is another great quality that I have. Yeah. And I say to anyone out there, just be authentic, keep loving hard. Yeah. But The Man in the Arena by Theodore Roosevelt, read that. 
Okay. Um, because who I am vulnerable to, they have to earn the right to be in the ring with me. Yeah. Right. So and vice versa. Right. If they're going to be vulnerable to you, right. We have to earn that right as well. We have to get bloodied and marred. Okay. If it's a spectator on the outside of the ring and you're not in the ring with me, getting all bloodied up and mm -hmm. beaten up, mm -hmm. then your opinion to me doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I encourage everyone place. to read The Man in the Arena. It's a very short, short, mm -hmm. um, powerful statement by Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, And so I, I qualify those people that I'm vulnerable to. Yeah. Okay, because you can't be vulnerable to everyone. Okay, um, but that's that's the level of self respect that one has, mm -hmm. right? You have mm -hmm. boundaries. You have emotional boundaries. You've got professional boundaries, um, and so that's just how I live. I love that. And you have to earn the right to come into that vulnerability, that space, and when you're, and vice you, versa. Yeah, I was going to say on the vice versa part when you're earning because we have to earn our stripes with those that we're trying to enter their space. Sure. Right, and we're sure. And I, I just learned something really powerful from you. Whereas, you know, I've asked for people, and not not with words, just with actions. Hey, be vulnerable with me. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give you. I'm going to love on you. Yeah. But until I have enough bricks that are stacked on their wall, you know, I'm not going to be able to bust through it unless they let me. Right. You know, and what you're saying is resonating with me. Yeah. Because that, that gives us a baseline to know that, hey, if I'm going to ask for this person to profoundly let me enter their spear. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. And you know what? You can't say it with your words. You have to do it with your actions. Yeah. That's that's amazing. For your actions speak so loud, I cannot hear what you're saying. So I watch the feet. I don't watch the lips. Mm. Yeah. And that goes for me too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Melissa, it's been amazing having you on today. It's been so fun. Yeah, this was Thanks long Thanks for letting overdue. me be vulnerable with you. <laughs> we You've earned, earned it. <laughs> You've earned it. You're in, it. you're in that ring. You're in that boxing ring with me. Yes. You know? Yes, yes. And we've been, again, you know, we've been in this, we've been in the trenches together all these yeah. years, and it's just really exciting to see uh, the woman that you've become, the woman yes. that you can, can continue to be. My best days are in front of me. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, to bless be continued. To be continued. Yeah. <laughs> I right. can't wait for that part. Let's go. <laughs> Get after it. Yeah. <laughs> Good times, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Steve. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.